right, it's decision making time. I decided to go ahead and pour it up my other partner, 5,000 plus here. But I didn't take it to as an extreme as my race style build. But it's close. Basically, basically all I'd have to do is uh, set it up with like a velocity stack and all that stuff and open up the muffler more. But as far as port work is concerned, she's pretty much there. The thing that's going to hold this saw back right now is going to be the muffler and the air filter setup. And I can tell you just in the bench run, it definitely wants it a lot. So, you know what I mean? But we're going to try to decide here today what we're going to do. So basically, what we got going on here is we built the Husqvarna 50 with 5,000, partner 5,000 top end on it as a race build. And not happy with it. Not happy with it at all. It performs, performs great, but it, it's got all sorts of attitude, if you know what I mean. So what I did here is I ported up this one. This one, I, I, I mean, I had been back and forth on the fence with this salt. Do I go alcohol? Do I do what? Do, you know what I mean? And eventually I come to the conclusion here that I'd be better off focusing on something like a 346 than I would the Partner 5000, simply because of parts availability. These partners, they do perform excellent as a race build. They are, they are, I mean, they've gone down in history as one of the best in the 50cc class. But, you know, they don't manufacture top ends for these, not in the, the original form at least. They do make one that'll work with it, but it's an open style transfer port. I mean, it's, it's nothing like what the originals were. I mean, it'll run, but it won't perform anything like what, you know, the originals will. So simply because of parts availability, I think it'd be better off starting to venture down that path towards like a 346 or something along that style. So what I did here is I ported this up and we're going to see how she runs here. Um, again, she's going to be held back from that muffler and that air filter, but we're going to see how she runs here and kind of decide what our future plans here are going to be for the races. Are we going to stick with the Husqvarna 50 with the Partner 5000 top end, or we could run this one, you know? But uh, I did have to steal the carburetor off of that Husqvarna 50 one to get this one up and running. Uh, at least running, you know, half decent. So if I do decide to run that other one at the races, I just got to pull the carburetor off of this, put it on it, or just buy another carburetor, put it on it and, you know, be done with it, you know? So one of those two things. But we're going to run it today and try to make a decision on basically which saw we want to run at the races. Uh, I do have the Charlie Briscoe 4910. I ran it for the last two years. This year, I want to run something I built. That's that's really just the purpose here, is I want to build one of my own and run something that I built. So, you know, there's a certain amount of pride to that. Uh, even if they don't perform, you know, as good as we'd hope, uh, at least, you know, we can say we ran something we built, you know? But, hey, that's the way it's going to be. So let's go ahead and give it a couple of test cuts, but stick around. I'm going to, at the end of the video, we're going to throw a couple of cuts from the uh, Dalmar 7900. We are doing a series of video, uh, we're working on a, a video right now, making cuts periodically on this log here, uh, just to get it broke in. And we're trying to document, you know, the break in process. So I'm just going to make a couple of cuts with it here today uh, at the end, throw it on the end of this video. And those cuts will be put in to that video I'm making showing the break-in process so uh, stick around if you want to see it run as well but what do you say we give this thing a run and try to come up with a better idea see how it performs and you know try to make a better decision here alrighty <laughs> Oh, 
Actually, all a day or two later, uh, we had some carb issues there. I was not expecting that, so the only carb I had laying around was a 660 carb. So that's what you got. <laughs> so yeah, we got a 660 carb on it. I already did some uh, test cuts and some tuning, so I'm going to show you how she's running. Uh, if we continue on with this plan, though, we're going to have to figure out something for an air filter because stock air filter will not work with that sucker so i don't want to do any cutting of plastic and stuff i'm going to try to retain the plastic as much as possible so let's make a cut or two this is what she looks like right now i'm not going to put the top plastic on we're just going to make a cut or two right now here and uh show you what she does Alrighty. i forgot to mention the uh throttle linkage is hanging up on me somewhere she's where is it I think it's in the trigger. I got to give it a little snap here and there to get it to release. I'll figure that out. But, oh, let me grab my tack too. All right. I don't think she's as fast as the Husky. We're going to find out. <laughs> She is about as fast as a Husky. I wasn't expecting that. This one's a little more zingy. So I'll see actually 13.6 out of this one. Uh, so like it, it's, it's got a, a wider RPM range. Like the other one was like 13.2, 13.4, the Husky. And this one's like 13 to 13.6. It's a little wider on the power band. You know what I mean? I think she could use more muffler, but I mean, she's running. Uh, yeah, maybe a timing advance. I, th I think it might need a timing advance, but yeah, I think she's, she, she's cooking pretty good. We might be, uh, switching our 50 CC saws here. So yeah, I'm actually surprised. Um, they're, they're both running about the same RPM. The Husky, I think has a narrower power band, but it made it a little more torquey at that peak part wherever in the air and in the power band where this one it's a little wider in the power band if you know what i mean i like this one more for obvious reasons you know what i mean um i think what we're going to do though is i think we're going to go ahead and work at uh finishing this saw as a build i mean it's it's almost there i got to get an air filter set up for it and you're probably going to see one big honking air filter on this thing uh, I have to do it off an elbow. Um, I can't just put a traditional like velocity stack off the back of the carburetor with a foam air filter because it'll be right into the handlebar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an elbow on it and stick the elf air filter on top of the elbow. But the air filter is going to stick up pretty far. So <laughs> I think the air filter is going to be as tall as the saw in the end, but who cares, right? It'll be amusing. A lot of people think I did that for, uh, I don't know, some people might think that I did that to uh, try to get even more power or whatever. And it's literally just because it's the easiest setup to put on it. You know what I mean? You just put the elbow on, you bolt the velocity stack on there, and bolt the air filter on. It just happens to be really big. Um, you know, the simple setup. There's no real modifications or nothing. So, 
The one thing I'm gonna have to do though is the, the, the studs to hold the carburetor in place. They're too short because um, this is a 660 carburetor. So the, the carburetor is so big, it's, it's consuming the entire length of the stud. So I'm gonna have to replace the stud and uh, you know just get longer bolts in there to hold everything together. But otherwise, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm happy with this one. I think this is the way we're gonna go right now for this year. Uh, and then the other one, the Husqvarna, with the Partner 5000 top end, I think what we'll do is throw that on the shelf until we get another top end, throw on that saw and build it with a new top end and just basically start over with it. And then I'll have two saws and they're both performing about the same. Just this one's a little more zingy, you know? Uh, well, maybe the, the next one will turn out about the same as this, but then I'll have two of these 50 CC, whatever the Partner 5000 style builds, one on a Husqvarna chassis and one as an actual Partner 5000. But yeah, I mean, she's pulling about the same RPM as the Husqvarna. Um, if I push a decent amount, it gets down to about, I'd say 12, eight to 13. So that's a, a heavy, a heavier push. But if I just let it do its job, and uh, kind of like self-feed or whatever. It's closer to like 13.8. And then with me applying pressure, probably it just depends on how hard I'm pushing, really. You know, probably gonna hover around 13.2 uh, with me applying pressure on this all. So yeah, I'm happy there. Uh, we'll run it a few more times and uh, get some tweaks done here. I'll wait until I get an air filter on it though until we uh, continue. I was originally, you know, as you've seen, I was going to put the uh, the stock air filter on it and just run it like that. But with this carburetor, the 660 carburetor is just too big and it won't allow it to fit in there. Um, maybe it will after I put studs in, but the hole in the carburetor is just so much bigger than what that factory air filter is. I'd be, it'd be like throwing a choke on, <laughs> you know what I mean? So just by putting the factory air filter on, it, it, it would, it'd be like running it with a choke on. Oh, there's another thing. I don't have a choke for this. Um, the choke doesn't hold itself in place. It's spring loaded. I gotta figure something out for the choke. So yeah, that or I just prime it the day of the races. <laughs> you know what I mean? Put a prime in it. Uh, so yeah, we'll figure something out though. Alrighty, so hey, we'll catch you in the next one later.